flavors out. And mix it all together and it's going to make kind of this, this wonderful paste. And then if you have a broiler at home, um, I recommend doing this under the broiler. Then I just take a little of the paste and I just spread it right onto the cheese. And then you can take this cheese and put it right underneath the broiler and it's going to slightly melt. Because uh, of it being denatured, it will stay uh, a little more solid. Um, it won't just instantly melt like most cheeses will. Denatured is the, the liquids removed? Yeah, there's uh, extra liquid has been extracted from it uh, through the, the process. So that was the piece that you put under the broiler and then you just laid it over the salad? Yeah, and then the salad was very uh, simplistic salad, just a little bit of a uh, Baby frise. I wanted a little color, so I got a little uh, red cabbage, a little bit of uh, Granny Smith apples, julienne, and then the cranberry vinaigrette. Um, I just took uh, dried cranberries and um, let them soak in some vinegar for a couple hours, and then I used that as the base of it, just lightly tossed together, and that was the salad. When it came to the feta cheese, I just really wanted to show how, how it can apply as a garnish. Uh, there is some other dishes that you could do with it, is uh, marinating it and setting it into the uh, oven for a little while, and it really stays firm, very similar to the uh, halloumi cheese. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions that came in? Yes. Okay. Questions? Yay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to... Uh, Read them in order. Okay. Uh, Juggy Bear wants to know. What are a couple of your favorite preparations of naked cow dairy cheese? Uh, a couple of your favorite pre preparations of naked cow dairy um, cheese. I really like uh, their um, their big cream a little rind, um, and really that one it's a great cheese just to accentuate on itself as a raw cheese uh, over top of salad. It would have been a nice complement with the salad that we were doing today. Um, also, just as uh, cheese and crackers. Uh, the feta, I really like uh, incorporating it into polenta. Um, because the tanginess of the, the feta works with the polenta. It also, because it's um, on the drier end of a cheese, um, it holds its texture. Um, so you get that nice creamy polenta and then a nice bite of uh, tangy feta. Uh, big cheese and rind, yeah. right now. What's, what's the big cream, big cream little rind. What's the texture and the flavor? It's uh, very similar to a brie. Um, the inside is, uh, or the outside is, is like the rind cheese, very like brie is. Um, the right on the outside, close to the rind, is a little more liquidy, and then as it gets to the middle, it's uh, a little more firmer. But it has a really great creamy texture. Hastings and Cleveland wants to know what's in the bisque. What is in the tomato bisque? Um, the tomato bisque, uh, I just took a lot of, uh, just, um, we end up with uh, tomato scraps from doing our mozzarella salads. So it really is a way of utilizing all the product. Um, take those and I sauteed it with a little bit of uh, onions, garlic, um, very light on the garlic, uh, celery, carrots, and then I cooked that down for about half an hour until all the tomato juices had really concentrated. I fortified it with a little bit of crushed tomato, uh, some heavy cream, um, some sherry, and a little bit of vegetable stock. And then I let that reduce down, uh, seasoned it, and adjusted the acidity by adding a little bit of sugar at the end so that it would be acid level wasn't too sharp. And then that's, the, that's what you sprinkled some of the feta on. And then I sprinkled some of the feta on top. Cheese to have the bread and crackers? Um, 
Well, really, any cheese I think works great with bread and crackers. There's some that you know accentuate it and are even better. Um, my grandmother, growing up, she would always have Borsin, uh, which is just a great spreadable cheese, very similar to the Pommard Blanc. Um, so it depends. But you'd also have at the same time a nice uh, Swiss cheese uh, on the side that I love. So it really depends on kind of what you're trying to pair with the cheese and crackers. Uh, if you're drinking, you know, some kind of nice Chardonnays, I would say for a lighter, um, lighter cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then for for somebody who just maybe a little afraid of cheese or always thinks cheese is stinky or moldy, how do they get started? Uh, <laughs> cheese. Well, I would say uh, definitely don't start with something like a Roquefort. <laughs> um, I would start with something a, bit, a little lighter, uh, a nice uh, comte, uh, which we serve as a good kind of uh, starting point that can develop, a, has some nice complex flavors that'll allow you to really uh, start to enjoy some of those deeper flavors that cheeses have. Um, a port salute is always a good one uh, that I recommend for kind of entering people into it. Start to see the different cheeses in different realms out there. What, what makes the cheese stinky? <laughs> um, it, <laughs> it's, I think, uh, it's a, the, the whole process of it just aging, and uh, you know, there's certain cheeses that are aged a little more and have uh, some bacteria with them. Because bacteria with cheeses isn't a bad thing. A lot of cheeses do require bacteria to be incorporated into them just so that they can, the, the way and the curd can separate and the cheese process can begin. So, um, don't be afraid of bacteria. <laughs> okay, so it's not a bad thing. It's so not a bad thing. thing. What's so interesting though, that the, the smell of your cheese is, if you taste them, they're, they just, they're a whole different world than the, what they smell. Kind of like some wine, you smell, you smell the wine and it has one flavor, and then when you taste it, the notes change. So don't be afraid, that's our advice. Any other questions, Mr. What kind of wines would you pair with a large block of cheese? With the Farmer's block, I would go with a, a lighter one, um, you know, Chardonnay's. Um, I would say maybe a nice Riesling would go nice with it. Um, it's a little on the sweeter end of the Riesling, but I think it would still hold up with that. And, and that's the soft one, right? Yes. Do you sometimes mix that with herbs or garlic, or can you make your own? Yes, this is a great one that you can actually go out and make a uh, more affordable, more sun cheese than uh, find it in the store. Uh, you can just roast off some garlic, or a little bit of chives and parsley, and have something that's very close. Uh, you can also take uh, spices, uh, whether it's even something as crazy as a curry, and incorporate it into this and have a very like curry cheese, spreadable cheese. So there's a lot of different directions you can go with uh, the Fromage Blanc. It's a very versatile cheese when it comes to flavors. I have one more sort of chef question for you. Um, what, what is the secret to good macaroni and cheese? Because the, the cheese gets a little funny sometimes. So how do you keep it so uh, um, It's really the, the, it's making a good bechamel. It's having the, the, the start point. If you're just trying to make a macaroni and cheese uh, using either reduced cream or just cream in itself, you're going to end up with kind of like that stringy, and sometimes it'll somewhat like separate. Um, I do recommend, you know, starting with the bechamel. It's just a little bit of butter and flour, and then you add the, the milk or cream to that, and it'll make a little bit of a sauce. And then you can incorporate your cheese into that and really make it so that it coats the Macaroni. Does, does the vegetable take a lot of time? Uh, no, it takes about a, it's about a 10 minute process to make. Uh, you can make it in advance and set it aside in the refrigerator and use it uh, as need be. Um, as chefs, we use it to sometimes melt sauces uh, as a thickening process. So if you have it in your refrigerator, you can, you're making a sauce, like a carbonara sauce or something like that, and it's a little runny, you can just take a little of the bechamel and So it is a uh, a very effective thing to have around. Well, that's perhaps it up for us, Chef. Thank you for your time and for showing us your mountain of cheese. Um, thank you again to Nina Snyder from Hagen Town Dairy, uh, Chef Marco Elder from Rosary Duvan. Our guest audience, you've been very patient, but I hope you've enjoyed your lunch and for our production crew. This program will be available for viewing on Channel 808 TV in a day or so. If you love your comments and suggestions about future shows, you can send them to me at info at rosarydubend.com. And I'm Nikki Lee from Rosary